Today my title is, If It Had Not Been For The Lord Who Is On Our Side. Subtitle, Where Would I Be Without Jesus? Before I open the word, let me share something stupid. A pastor dies and goes to heaven and is waiting in line at the pearly gates. Ahead of him is a guy who's dressed in sunglasses, a loud shirt, a leather jacket, and jeans. St. Peter addresses that guy, who are you so that I can know whether or not to admit you the kingdom of heaven? The guy says, I'm Joey Shost, the retired pilot from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Simon Peter consults his list. He smiles and says to the pilot, Take this expensive silken robe and this golden staff and enter into the kingdom of God. The pilot goes into heaven with his silk robe and staff. Next in line is the pastor. He stands erect and booms out, I'm Joseph Snow, pastor of Church for the Nation. The last 43 years, St. Peter consults his list, says to the pastor, take this cotton robe and this wooden staff and entered the kingdom. Just a minute, the pastor says, that man was a pilot, and he gets a silken robe and a golden staff. How can this be? Up here, we work by results, St. Peter says. While you preached, people slept. While he flew, people prayed. (laughs) That's from the 22nd chapter of the book of Revelation, I think, somewhere in there. Psalm 124, just a beautiful a biographical expression of praise, gratitude, and really of insight um, from the psalmist. Verse 1 says, If it had not been the Lord who is on our side, let Israel now say, If it had not been the Lord who is on our side, when men rose up against us, they would have swallowed us alive when their wrath was kindled against us. Then the waters would have overwhelmed us. The stream would have gone over our soul. The swollen waters would have gone over our soul. Blessed be the Lord who has not given us as prey to their teeth. Our soul has escaped as a bird from the snare of the fowlers. The snare is broken and we have escaped. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. Father, thank you for your word that's alive and filled with your nature, your power, your life. Anoint your servant, your word, and your people. Today I announce is a snare-breaking day. Today God showed the devil who's boss. Let freedom, let liberty, let healing and joy manifest itself in this place and to those that watch. In Jesus' name, amen. I love this honest. One thing about David was the continual desire for almost a brutal honesty. He had integrity, which is really transparency. He was honest to God and honest to people, and that kept him healthy. We're only as healthy as we are honest. And God was drawn to that measure of integrity, a man after my own heart, even though he had sinful issues. God was drawn toward the openness, the transparency, and the brokenness of his heart. David said, I've been through some stuff, man. And he uses the metaphors of a a swollen river, the waters being powerful and trying to drown him in sorrows. He said all of these Events happen through people the same way God uses people, the devil uses people. David said, people tried to drown me. They tried to drown my soul in sorrow. They tried to bury me in the oceans of trauma. And then he said, likened it to a beast that blessed the Lord who has not allowed me to be delivered into the mouth of their prey, of the prey to be the prey of this lion A wild beast, a ravenous monster, a a person whose agenda is to 
destroy you. David faced that in his own family. He had enemies, not just from other nations, but his spiritual father, really his, his mentor, Saul, turned against him and tried to murder him for over a decade. His own family had issues. His own son betrayed him and tried to destroy him. David knew what it was like to go through the storms, the setbacks, and the, the painful dysfunction of family and of people. And then he likens the last metaphor to a bird trap, a snare, and the fowler, the one who catches the bird. He, he, David said, I faced some traps that were so demonic, so strategic, so, so imaginative, that I don't know how I got out of them. Oh yeah, the Lord got, brought me out. The, 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 the enemy thought he had outwitted God. And there's always, I, I, I've been in my lifetime sadly impressed by the ingenuity, in fact, the incredible intelligence often of people with evil agendas that have done things so complicated and so sophisticated in their design. You're like, wow, wow, how did they come up with that? And when you face one of those snares, it's, it, it is both impressive and then also discouraging. And, and just know this, no matter how smart your enemy thinks they may be, they're never smarter than God. The Holy Spirit will always be the smartest person in the room. And in your life, he will always protect you from the design of others. First point, you are a miracle. You shouldn't even be here. The devil tried to destroy you. Your enemies fought to defeat you. The world tried to shut you up and silence you. Anybody relate to that? But here you are a living testimony of our loving God's providential grace and care and protection. You are a miracle. It's so important that we put into proper perspective and have a high view of our life so that we are not engulfed in today's storms, that we see the overarching truth that our life is a miracle, that every demon in hell tried to keep you from knowing Jesus, that every demon in hell tried to kill you, but you're alive, you know Christ, you're sitting here, you're watching, you're a miracle. And even beyond that, your God has fought for you in hundreds of battles you don't even know about. Ever find out about something God set you free from after it was over? Like, I didn't even know that happened. Wow. It's half my lifetime. That's half my story. Wow, the Lord helped me again. You've survived things, people, and traumas that, have, that should have destroyed your life, your mind, and your faith. But here you are, an overcomer. Here you are, a grace-filled believer. Here you are, a worshiper of Jesus. I know it feels like you've been through a whole lot of difficulty and pain, but I want to remind you that God has always been with you, and he's always brought you through those difficult things. Yes, I'm sorry for what you've been through, but let me just help you. you you're through it. Well, Pastor, it's not over, but, but, but you're going to get through it. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. You are with me, God. That is always the sustaining grace of your abiding protective presence. A hundred thousand demons couldn't keep your loving God from bringing salvation to you through his son. Your salvation. Ugh. The devil hates losing souls. The greatest battle on the earth isn't for money and isn't for influence, it's for human souls. For the eternal value of people knowing and living in heaven or, no, or not knowing God and being separated eternally from God. And so that's, that's a real thing. And every demon in hell couldn't stop God from getting you. You know, when you study biology, we are really complex creatures, complexly designed, all the systems of our body, the more deeply we delve into human medical science, the more we appreciate the tremendous intricate fashion, how fearfully and wonderfully we've been made. Isn't that a great, but we begin as a one cell being. 
It is so amazing. One cell, and in that cell was your heart, your kidneys, your lungs, your mind, your brain, your body, your hair color, your height, all the sophistication of who you are. You're talking about how mighty God is. How about your story is a miracle. Some of you, the devil tried to kill in childhood. Some of you, God stopped your parents from aborting you. Some of you, disease tried to take you out. Some of you, heartache was so severe and so overwhelming. You're here as a miracle from God. The devil thought he would drive you insane or to drugs or to alcohol or to some other abusive, self-destructive behavior. But here you are loving Jesus and worshiping God. You're a miracle. David said, blessed be the Lord who has not allowed me to be delivered into their prayer, their, the prey. The devil couldn't have you because God fought for you. And that is the good news of your story. That's the testimony of who God is. That's what God has for you to know. The second point is this. The devil is a beast on a leash. His, his attack and authority has always been limited by God, even in the Old Testament and Old Covenant. But ultimately, he was defeated by Jesus at the cross. So the devil's a defeated enemy. He only has power through deception and through temptation and through disobedience from God. But the Bible gives us so many great promises. First Peter 5 says this, be sober, be vigilant. Why? Because your adversary, the devil, walks about as a roaring lion seeking whom we may devour. The next sentence says, resist him. James 4 says, submit yourself to God, resist the devil, and he will flee. He will flee you. God's given you authority to stop the devil. You have authority to rebuke the devil. There'll never be a demon, a demonic power, a stronghold, or any kind of agency of the devil or the devil himself that has control over your life. You have authority to tell him no. You can rebuke him, resist him, remove him. You can cast him out. You can step on him. You can crush him under your feet. You can live in victory. The enemies defeat him. The, the Bible doesn't say that God took him off the planet. He's still here. But he's here so the church can exercise the victory and the atoning redemption of the cross and defeat him. The devil's defeated. In Jesus' name, Job 38, God's preaching to Job. Job was in a little bit of trouble with God. And Job's being preached to. Church, can imagine church and God himself is preaching. There's one person at church. And... Uh, and so God's telling Job how it really was. And, he, and God describes the creation of waters, the creation of oceans and seas. He says, were you there when I made the great waters? When I dug into the earth and created their depths? When I set boundaries for them and said to the waters, thus far may you come, but no further. You'll stop at the shore. Uh, there's been so many things God said to the devil, you can't do that, the maiden. You can't do that. The boundaries of heaven have protected me from the assault of the enemy. And in your story, it's the same thing. The devil can't do whatever he wants to do. The devil can't have you. He can't have your family. He can't do whatever he feels like doing. You're living proof of the power of God and the victory God gives his people over the enemy. Another aspect of this is something that's really Important. David was unafraid of talking about his past, especially now in this chapter, referring then to the consequence of deliverance. And so he, his testimony was always with him. There's power in your testimony. When we talk about what God's done for us by sharing our testimony, the same grace that brought that victory is resurrected, bubbles up again. And maybe not just for us, but for the people that are listening. God wants to do for them what he did for you. When you talk about what God did for you, it allows him to do it for them. Tell everybody you know what God set you free from. Don't be embarrassed if it was drugs or sex or whatever it was. Never let the devil shame you from sharing your testimony. I tell my testimony all over the world. I'll do a pastor's conference this month and I'll open it by telling them about how big I failed. And there'll be a hush in the room. 
I'm unashamed. I failed so bad, had so many bad things happen, but look what Jesus did. Look what Jesus did. Blessed be the Lord who has not given us as prey to their teeth. Oh, you're a miracle. Tell your neighbor you're sitting next to a miracle. Just tell them that. David in the great story of David and Goliath in 1 Samuel 17. David has unusual fearless courage and so he stands out. But he's still a boy. He's still, you know, mid-teenage boy. And, and so David said, let me fight Goliath. And Saul says, you're not even a man yet. And that guy has been a man since he was a boy. You know, this, this uh, Goliath somewhere between 9 and 11 feet tall. He's superhuman, big. And David said, you don't understand. This isn't my first fight. He said, when no one noticed, a bear tried to take one of my sheep. But I defeated that bear and rescued that lamb. And then a lion came and tried to kill one of my sheep, but I killed that lion and rescued the lamb. And David said, it makes sense to me that the God who delivered me from a lion and a bear could deliver me from Goliath. Your testimony. Ever, ever jumped off a springboard at the pool? I guess they're illegal now, but they used to have them in homes. And we would do the craziest stuff, you know, we'd run and bounce, and the board would give us all kinds of elevation. Your testimony is a springboard into miracles and victories and similar kinds of victories for people that hear your testimony. Just tell everybody what Jesus has done for you. And by the way, sometimes you've got to tell yourself. When we forget what God's brought us out of. We lose a weapon to overcome what we're facing today. Remind yourself, uh, look what the Lord has done. Look what the Lord has done for me. Look what God has done. Never stop praising God for what he's done for you. And let me just go, you might say, oh, Pastor, you don't understand. I'm going through the most intense and most arduous and most hurtful season of my life. I'm, I'm with you. I'm sorry that's happening. But, but let's, let's focus on this. Every Christian has unending reasons to worship God and to declare praises out of their mouth. Never stop praising God. Why? Your sins have been forgiven. Your life has been redeemed from the hand of the enemy by the precious blood of Jesus. You've been adopted into God's family. You've been called and chosen, justified, sanctified, glorified, anointed. You've been accepted in the beloved. You've been blessed with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places. You're more than a conqueror through him who loves you. Heaven is your home. God is your father. Jesus is your savior. The Holy Spirit is your helper. Remind yourself and rehearse in your heart and your mouth what it means to be saved. And your joy will come back. The third point, David said, both then and now, maybe he was talking about what he'd been through, but now he said this, the snare is broken. The God who broke snares then, the God who set me free then will set me free now. The snare is broken and our soul has escaped the trap of the enemy, the intention of the enemy. So I just want to close this service talking about the snare breaking God, the curse breaking God, the devil defeating God. In this season of your life, this is a giant conquering season. This is a snare destroying season. We can't wait for giants to leave. We have to kill them. We can't wait for life just to get magically better. We have to bind the devil to overcome his tactics. We have to overcome every trap and snare and, and trick of the enemy. Whatever the enemy's got you into to make you miserable or depressed or discouraged and happy, anxious or fearful, the devil's a liar. I declare over you the snare of fear is broken in the mighty name of Jesus. The Bible says in 2 Timothy 1, 7, God hasn't given us a spirit of fear, but he has given us a spirit of power and of love and a sound mind. 
I rebuke panic attacks. I rebuke anxiety. I rebuke phobias. I declare this is your year to be free from fear. The Bible says perfect love casts out fear because fear involves torment. I declare the snare of discouragement is being broken. The devil is a liar. We just saying about it, I just saying about it, they that wait upon the Lord renew their strength. Their mental, emotional capacities, their spiritual their, uh, faith is rebuilt, re restored, so they cannot just function, so they can soar. You weren't made to just endure life. You were made to enjoy by overcoming. Amen. Oh, Pastor, I'm just taking up my cross. I love taking up my cross. I die to my maiden selfishness. I, but I find so much joy walking with Jesus. It's even better. So much joy. The curse of discouragement is broken. It has to leave you. We declare it in Christ's name. The curse of doubt is broken. The snare of doubt is broken. Ah. People are acting like there's some kind of new progressive, sophisticated understanding of life and we're, we're, they're taking a a new view of scripture, a new view of spiritual things, and, and they call it deconstructing your faith, but the Bible just calls it doubt. The word of God is the word of God. No matter how modern our approach and so, our sophisticated interpretation, the Bible is God's word. It's eternal. It will outlive the earth. It will outlive all of man until we're in heaven. The Bible's forever, oh God, your word is settled in heaven. And so we can overcome doubt by what? Feed our faith. The Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Stop feeding yourself fear and doubt and unbelief. Stop being an expert on what the devil's doing and start being an expert on what God's doing. Stop. Every time the market goes down, you shouldn't go down. Every time some goofball says something on the media, don't let them pull you into the snare of being cynical or unbelieving or fearful. You have to, you have to manage your emotions, your faith, your mind, and protect yourself, especially from the sneaky approach of doubt. Well, I'm just being rational. No, you're being fleshly. My faith is stronger than my logic. Now I have a high capacity of logic. You know, I did okay in the IQ test and all that nonsense. But all that, all the time, you have to overcome it when you believe God. Well, Pastor, how will God do it? He's tricky. He's sneaky. Don't try to figure out how, who, when, where. Just believe Him. I love what beautiful Mary said. God's given me the gift of childlike faith. I like that. I like that. The snare of deception is broken. I declare every person in your family bound by false philosophy, false religion, or any other spiritual deception. I declare freedom to your family in the mighty name of Jesus. Devil, you can't have a single one of them. Jesus said in John 8, if you continue with me, you're my disciple, and then you'll know the truth and the truth will make you free. Now, let me just say this about self, about deception. So, you know, denial is not just a river in Egypt. All of us are growing freer. And that means we're coming out of wrong beliefs or self-deceptions. For all of our life, we keep moving forward. No one is 100% accurate except Jesus. The Holy Ghost, so all of it, we're growing. So we always want to be open, God, Speak to me, correct me about anything I'm believing wrong. I don't want to have a wrong attitude about marriage, about life, about sex, about money, about ministry, about this, that, 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 about politics, about whatever, whatever. However, I want to always submit to you. I don't want to get so woke, I'm ungodly. Okay? Hey, it's good to know the truth of America. It's good to know, but man, I want to start meeting some woke people that are at least nice. That's, that's my prayer. I'd rather be spiritually awake than socially woke. 
Not, not picking on you. Whatever that means, always remember this. The ultimate war of progressive philosophy is not against conservatives, it's against Christianity. And we are next. Yeah, they tried to sign and say, they're going to try to shut up preachers, shut up the gospel, shut down medias, whatever they tried to do, because the truth offends them. To people that hate the truth, the truth sounds like hate speech. But it's not. It's freedom speech. And you can be free. Okay. I don't want to ruin my birthday. The snare of anxiety is broken. Amen. The snare of anxiety. When you have a perpetual issue, maybe, you, don't, you know, someone that's sick, a family member, a child, a spouse, a sibling, a financial. So some issues that are constant give us the temptation to be constantly in upheaval, in emotional upheaval. But the word of God and the spirit of God are so powerful that we can sleep in the storm. Cast all your care upon him. The Bible says in Philippians 4, don't worry about anything, pray about everything. And then peace from heaven comes, guarding your souls, protecting your minds. We can be snared. The snare of lust is broken. The snare of lust is broken. There's never been a time, I'm just going to touch this for a minute, there's never been a time in history when pornography has been so widely available. It is distorting an entire generation's view of sex. So one click on a computer, bam. It's not just pornography. It's some of the most grotesque and X-rated versions of pornography, little children. Now it's, they're saying nine years old is the average introduction to pornography. So what happens is Pornography retrains your mind to view sex in a different way. And it makes people then not able to have healthy, normal, loving, biblical boundaries and relationships in marriage. No matter who's here, if you've been battling lust, this is your year to be free from it. Man or woman. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 10, 13, no temptation is overtaking you except that which is common to all men. But God is faithful, who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you're able, and with temptation make a way of escape. It's interesting, when Paul's talking to Timothy about sexual temptation, he never says resist it, he always says run from it. Interesting, yeah? Don't put yourself in an environment to fail. You with me? All the guys going to the top of the spar, don't do it. Don't watch it. Don't do it. Be careful. If you're single, be careful about putting yourself in an environment where you only have sorrow and shame. God, will, the Holy Spirit will always try to warn us from dangerous places. Okay. Got it. Got to end on a better note. The snare of trauma is broken, and the snare of identity trauma is broken. Now, this is the big stuff, big thing, because now, you know, I, I did a, a sermon last year. When I looked in, it was like on Facebook, 150 different gender choices. Um, you know, you, you, you literally need a, def, you know, a dictionary. Under, what the heck is that? So the devil is unleashed identity confusion. The, the culture supports it. Find yourself. But when God created man and woman, the Bible says this, in the beginning, God created heavens and earth, and, and God created man in his own image, male and female. That's it. I have great empathy, compassion for people that are battling sexual confusion, it doesn't matter what it is, transgenderism or any other form of it now, all the other things that are happening. I, I'm with you. 
but you can never be eternal, internally at peace when you're at war with God. When you're at war with the design of God's nature, when you try to change that, it will never bring you peace. So God wants people free. And I just declared that people are going to come out of the deception, the snare of identity confusion. The snare of just trauma in general is broken in Jesus' name. Jesus said, I've come to heal broken hearts. There's no snare in this planet. I've got to end, but there's no snare in this planet God can't break. Father, I thank you today. As I close, let every snare be broken. Let every deception be uncovered. Let every trap be defeated. God, I thank you for this year as an overcoming, increase, victory, miracle year. It's a comeback year. It's a fulfilled promise year. It's a snare-breaking year. And God, I thank you. I declare over the men of this church that they're going to be, that they're going to conquer the giant of pornography. I declare over the women of this church they're going to conquer the giant of, of heartache and trauma. I declare the children's church, God, will not be bound and deceived by identity, deception, or trauma, but they'll be history makers and world shakers. And Father, I thank you for the greatest move of God in human history. You're, you're releasing it to the earth. We honor you and praise you in Jesus' name. Thank you for listening to me. On my birthday, stand to your feet, please, as we close. The last thing David said was, our help is in the name of the Lord made heaven and earth would you just say the name of Jesus with me Jesus we honor you Jesus you're everything you're the creator the sustainer the savior redeemer provider healer liberator you're you're everything we need you're the grace giver your kindness is immeasurable your mercy never ends we honor you and praise you Lord Jesus for your faithfulness I just want you to thank God for helping you. Whatever he's done in your story, just take a moment and thank God that he's been with you, he loves you, he's for you. Thank him for what he's brought you through. And maybe you're going through a tough storm. I'm, I'm sorry you're going through it, but let's worship God through it. And let's remind ourselves that this won't be the first time God's helped us. Lord, prayer team, if you please join me down front. Lord, we worship you and praise you, God. Today as we close the service, we don't want to invite anyone who needs prayer to join us at the front. The most important thing in life is knowing Jesus and having a relationship with him, receiving his grace, receiving his forgiveness, receiving his new life. We'd be so honored to pray for you, to help you declare out of your own mouth the Lordship of Christ. If you've been away from God, make this come home Sunday, homecoming Sunday, okay? This will be your time to watch God do a miracle in your story. Maybe you're hurting in your mind, your physical body. Don't just race out. Let someone pray for you. We'd love to pray for anyone that's hurting. If this has been a tough week or a tough season, you're thinking that you want really want prayer, don't race out. Race out. Let someone pray for you. Church, just for 60 seconds longer, would you worship God with me while those seeking prayer come forward?